Hello and welcome to News Today. My name is Bright Nana Amfo. Coming up, President John Dramani Mahama makes strong case for African nations and the developing world to be supported in a local manufacture of antiretroviral drugs to ensure a more affordable treatment of people living with HIV AIDS. Coming up in business, Bank of Ghana revises its earlier directives regarding the rules on the operations of foreign exchange accounts and foreign currency accounts announced on February 4, 2014. On the international front, leaders of four African nations, Botswana, Gabon, Chad and Tanzania, pledged to honor a 10-year moratorium on sales of ivory. We have showbiz and more coming up right here. Thanks so much for staying there. In our first story, President John Dramani Mahama has made a strong case for African nations and the developing world to be supported in a local manufacture of anti-retroviral drugs to ensure a more affordable treatment of people living with HIV AIDS. Speaking during a high-level meeting of UN AIDS and Lancet Commission in London on Thursday, the president said instead of a costly importation of these ARVs, African nations can and must be supported to produce these drugs much more cheaply at home. He added that many more lives would be saved through this proposal and the fight against HIV and AIDS could be won much more quickly. President Mahama, who is one of three heads of state serving as commissioners on the international body, stated the difficulty in accessing drugs is one of the major challenges confronting HIV patients. He described the situation as a serious negative reflection of a lopsided structure in the reproduction of ARVs globally. President Mahama challenged UN AIDS, the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, and other partners in the international community to provide tangible assistance for building the capacities of local pharmaceutical companies in Africa. In my previous political life as Minister of Communications of Ghana, I was involved in the initial response that we crafted in Ghana against HIV AIDS and uh, that's what Richard was referring to when <laughs> AIDS was a taboo uh, topic at the time and uh, together with Johns Hopkins we crafted the communication strategy that increased awareness and um, promoted the ABC of AIDS and promoted uh, prevention and protection. Uh, one of the messages was if it's not on it's not in and it created a an uproar in the faith community, the bishops and everybody were in arms while we were promoting <laughs> condoms and all that. But I think that we've come a long way since then. We have the churches on board, we have all the faith communities on board, and uh, we've made quite good progress. Ghana has gone from nearly 4% prevalence at that time to 1.9, and uh, we're still going down further. Conferences like this help me to focus again on, you know, diseases like HIV AIDS and uh, help us to craft the kinds of strategies that um, uh, continue the fight against the disease. Um, I think that it also serves as a reality check. As president, you deal with statistics and broad segments of the society. And so um, I believe that my expectation is that we continue to look beyond the statistics and see that these statistics represent real human lives. And uh, we need to do something to ensure that our people are able to live in dignity and decency. Recently, in respect of uh, non-availability of ARVs to give to uh, positive pregnant mothers and that has um, affected the targets for elimination of uh, virtual uh, uh, mother-to-child transmission. Um, in Ghana we took the three zeros and we also added um, virtual elimination of mother-to-child uh, transmission We've made good progress. Indeed, I overstated our prevalence rate is 1.37, not 1.9. And um, we have been on track to achieve virtual elimination of um, mother-to-child transmission by 2015. Post-2015, the same energy and focus that we have paid to HIV and AIDS will continue 
to uh, prevail, especially for Africa in the sense of the changing demographics that we see on the continent. Africa's population is growing exponentially and um, in the next couple of decades would be above the one billion mark. Mm -hmm. A good part of this population is going to be youth youthful and that is both an advantage and a disadvantage. We must be able to create enough jobs for all these people. We must be able to ensure and guarantee a decent life for them and make sure that they have access to good quality uh, health care. President John Dramani Mohamed is still staying on health. Community-based health planning services, CHIPS compounds, are facing challenges with health insurance because the compounds are not accredited by the National Health Insurance Authority. Komla Ato reports there is no insurance cover at these CHIPS facilities. This was revealed by the Volta Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Joseph Tainwete, in an interview with Joy News at the annual performance review in WHO. According to Dr. Nwete, it's unfortunate the National Health Insurance Scheme is only focused on regional and district hospitals. According to him, it is failing the health services strategy for rural people to access health care through the CHIPS compounds. So the CHIPS compound becomes nearest health facility for them to go to. Unfortunately, we have a challenge with health insurance. Health insurance is focusing on regional hospitals and district hospitals. But how about the CHIPS compound, which are the primary, very primary facilities that where people have access to? They are not accredited as it were. So um, they gave a provisional accreditation at the beginning. But we realized that there is a need to do a comprehensive accreditation for them to have the free will to be able to be paid appropriately for the primary illnesses that they attend to. Dr. Nweti said there is the need for the health service to dialogue with the National Health Insurance Authority to be able to recognize the CHIPS compounds. Komlado's report for Joy News. In other news, former President Jerry John Rawlings has described as incompetent a sizable percentage of government officials serving in President Mohammed's government. According to the former president, people have reached the saturation point and felt it is important that Mahama reshuffled his ministers. President Rawlings was speaking in an exclusive interview with Joy News' Elton John Broby on Thursday, also denied rumors circulating within government and the party that he is holding on to the list of those likely to be affected by an impending reshuffle. I'm not unaware of the occasional misuse of my name by elements in the party and government to cover up their own weaknesses. No such list has come to my office. And let me assure you, if such a list were to come to my office, it would take not, no longer than 30 minutes on my table because all I'll have to do is to tick, cancel, or put a question mark to any such suggested names and send it right back to where it would have come from. Most of the time, I hear these things on the air, like most of you. Yes, and that's true. These changes, I believe, should have taken place towards the end of last year, when Ghanaians had actually reached their saturation point with what they perceived you know, as the incompetence or the non-performance of some of the appointees. But it didn't happen. There's a bit of stress, it's of, I mean, anxiety, some sense of expectation. Mm. But there again, that's where my name becomes a convenient tool to be misused. But make no mistake, some of us who are perceived to be part and parcel of the changes or these developments hear it also on the air like most of you. And I find it extremely mischievous that some of the leaders in the party tend to create this false impression that Rawlings knows and approves of everything going on in government. So this is purely on the fact that mm -hmm. some of the appointees are simply not competent. Of course. <laughs> A sizable percentage of them I don't think uh, should have were good enough. And they demonstrated it with their time in office. But uh, And I don't think this is a matter of opinion, really. I think... We can all see, you know, the result of their 
their work. Let's stay a little longer on uh, the comments by ex-president Rawlings. David Agbe is the executive director of the Ghana Institute for Governance and Security. He says, join me on phone. David, thanks so much for staying there. Now, uh, President Mohammed's government is just uh, one year old and uh, let's say two months in office. Now, the concern of ex-president Rawlings is that some ministers are simply uh, non-entities. They are not performing. Uh, one and uh, one year, two months, uh, can we uh, use it to, to, to judge, to look at uh, how good or bad these ministers have been? No, no, thank you so much. Uh, I, I think that, uh, uh, first of all, um, we, we need to actually challenge the appointment processes mm. of, of ministers. You know, when we understand those processes very well, we try to actually minimize our level of criticism. Uh, here we, in, in Ghana, what we have, uh, which is the constitutional provision of, you know, trying to appoint majority of ministers from parliament, is it, it, a, a, a big, you know, challenge uh, to, to all of us. And so the government or the president is mandated to appoint majority of his ministers from uh, the parliament, not, you know, from the outside. And, and secondly, the, the regional balance issue is also a big, 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 big problem that we have to actually look at. The regional balance, the constitutional provision of mandating the president to appoint people, you know, from the parliament house. And, and, and lastly, uh, the issue of loyalty is also another big problem. Right. That is confronting our governance process. David, as far as all these appointments are concerned, Nana. David, we're going to all these, but first of all, uh, I'm asking that uh, the, the government is in power I one know, year Nana. and some two months. I, is this time enough to be able to make uh, a, a correct judgment of the performance of these ministers? Uh, Nana, could you come again? Uh, let, let, let's try and see if you can hear me better now. I'm asking yeah. that uh, these ministers were appointed or have been in office, uh, let's say one year, just about a year old in office. Is this good enough for us to be able to make uh, judgment of what they can or cannot do? It is not good enough to, 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 to be able to assess, you know, their capacity and their competence. And, and so I will, I will uh, disagree with the former president, you know, saying that, you know, a lot of them are incompetent. I will disagree uh, with him on, on this call. Uh, the, the, the reality but, is that but David, they, I, 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 David, I'm not cutting in rudely, but uh, what time frame within which you think we can uh, make a proper assessment of their performance? Uh, Nana, I, I think that after one and a half years or two years down the line, we can be able to really assess the competence and, and the capacity of our ministers very, very well. Because uh, Nana, the fact is that some of them they are on the job not because they are only party members, but they are on the job based on the calculated you know, achievements which they have done somewhere before, and therefore they are brought on the job. And governance, you know, it is a learning process. It is a continual learning process. And I think that the government, as we speak now, is challenged as a result of the fact that we're able to mobilize enough resources to finance government projects. David, uh, I, 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 again, again, I have to come in, David. Uh, Ex-President Rawlings also raising, uh, raises another issue, that, uh, that this is not a time to uh, learn on the job. This is not a time to try those who are not properly cooked on the job, and that the party, the NDC, has a lot of experienced people uh, to be used. Uh, what, what about that? Nana, it is true that NDC has a lot of experienced people, but I strongly believe that any job in this world, it is through learning, it is through training, before the person can become a competent person. And, and I, I sincerely believe that the former president, former President Rollins, was also trained as a military person before he, he, he went through the ranks and became the president of this nation. 
So why can't we also allow certain group of people to be trained on the job so that when it gets to a certain point in time, we can be able to assess them, you know, you know very well. And, and, and also say that, yes, these people, are, are, no matter how you train them, they, they will not become competent. But as you speak now, it is less than, you know, one year now to be able to really assess those people, you know, so professionally. So on that call, I will still disagree with my former president that although his criticisms are good, but on the other side of the coin, I, I think that we should be able to allow certain group of people to be trained on the job properly, and then uh, we will be able to actually assess their, their credibility and their performance. David Agbe is the executive director of the Ghana Institute for Governance and Security. They're talking to me about comments made by ex President Rawlings for asking that some ministers in the Mahama administration be uh, reshuffled. You're still live on news today. The Minister of Interior, Kwesi Ahoy, has by executive instrument renewed the curfew imposed on Alavanyo and Inkonya townships with effect from Friday, February 14, 2014. The decision was taken as well on the advice of the Volta Regional Security Council. The curfew hours remain from 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. A statement signed by Mr. Hoy uh, noted government continues to express its appreciation to the chiefs, elders, opinion leaders, youth and people of the area for their efforts in ensuring peace in the area and urges them to use the established mechanisms for the resolution of all their conflicts and disputes. The statement reiterated that the ban on all persons in the two towns and its environs from carrying arms, munitions, or any offensive weapon is still in force. The statement warned any person found with any arms or ammunition will be arrested and prosecuted. Yes, alive on news today. Some news just coming in. The attention of government has been drawn to depictions of an impending ministerial reshuffle. A statement signed by the Minister for Information and Media Relations, Mahama Yariga, says the publications hint at the existence of a possible list of hands to be reshuffled and which list is said to be circulating in some quarters. Government would like to state that the reports are an elementary political tactic designed to stay the hand of the president, assuming his plans to undertake a reshuffle or to stampede his excellency into carrying out a reshuffle if he intends otherwise. The statement continues, the last two weeks have recorded stringent steps by the government to halt the free fall of the local currency and stabilize the economy. His Excellency will therefore not be distracted from pursuing and delivering on the priority areas of the Better Ghana Agenda. The statement concluded, if at any time His Excellency, the President decides to reshuffle his cabinet, his decision will neither be influenced nor clouded by such reports, but will be done through sound judgment and a careful consideration of the resources at his disposal. That statement was signed by the Minister for Information and Media Relations, Honorable Mahama Ayarga. In some other news, road users and traders around the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra are urging speedy completion of the three-tier interchange there, pleading that government avoid a situation where the project will stall for any reason. He explained any excuses to delay the project, such as lack of funds, would compound the already heavy traffic situation they are currently having to contend with as a result of the project. Kwame Nkoma Circle is a major hub in the road transportation network in Accra, with about 84,000 vehicles passing through daily. Its importance cannot be underestimated as it links the sub-urban areas of Accra to the central business district. The myriad of commercial activities which take place here, especially at the pedestrian shopping mall and the various bus terminals, draw hundreds of thousands of commuters. One of the admirable features of the Kwame Nkoma Circle 
was the ever flowing fountain. But as construction work has started, it is no more. In place would be a world class interchange to ease the traffic congestion in the capital. But of great concern to traders and commuters of this road is how soon the project would be completed. They fear that any delay in the completion of the project could aggravate the tense traffic situation in the capital. So my intent may be fetching because you see I know petrol never wedding every day, every night in our tosso. This is why I intend to ma tema so di travel more more now di traffic in the more petrol no so called the best a buying say a moment dance or bay my intent and send a bay a bit my boy. Though motorists are sometimes inconvenienced by the diversions created as a result of the project, they say they are willing to cooperate with the authorities to ensure work progresses smoothly. On my best start in Lomania year meeting about three or four times or cathedral. Uh-huh. And you are much Senna or Mobesi as you say when you must send a bay and higher in Edgema. Oh well recently the Omoba Moda Betia. But on my we first a you know, which is a a sick group for Navy Char, a coin on my direction. I be faso. But others are worried the construction may cause unprecedented floods when the rains set in. Meanwhile, the notorious storm drain right in front of the Kumasi bus terminal has finally been covered with the other also being worked on. Though the project, however, is scheduled to be completed in 24 months, contractors believe they could finish ahead of schedule as funds are already available. Yafusia Jimfi, Joy News, in Chroma Circle. And coming up in business, Bank of Ghana reviews the directives on the foreign exchange account. That and more when I return on business. Welcome back to news today. A total of 6,823,782 pounds and 783 shares have so far been traded this week on the Ghana Stock Exchange. The sales value amount is 9,692.66 Ghana cities. Market capitalization on the Ghana Stock Exchange as at February 13 stood at 59,526.91 million Ghana cities, down from Monday's 62,737.66 million Ghana cities. Uh, these are some of the figures from the Ghana Stock Exchange. David Odoedankwa is with the Gold Coast Fund Management. He joins me to take a look at the market. Good afternoon and welcome. And um, the market has been quite uh, uh, doing well after... The, the, the year resumed. Is that what was forecasted? Um, yeah, that was what was forecasted, mm. but with the incoming of the depreciation of the CD, mm. we thought the market would be a little down because, you know, when any time your currency is falling, then it means it's not viable to do investment in that local currency. But um, we, we didn't see it that way, right. but rather the market uh, keep on increasing. Uh, this week, the market has turned to a different um, direction mm. as we've seen the um, composite, both the composite and the financial index dropping on three occasions out of the four sessions that it has traded for um, the week. The market uh, has been down for three times and was up um, only on Wednesday, so that we don't know whether now the economic um, um, indicators, the performance of the economic having indicators, a on the is market. having a toll on the market. That is what we are here to establish. I mean, we can't establish because we can see the volumes are still up there. I mean, with a total of about 6.8 uh, million, comparatively to what we've been recording in previous weeks, we can see um, the market is still doing well, and the 9,000 um, as the silver value, the market is doing well. So mm. we can't just conclude just that if you are measuring your performance or your portfolio in terms of um, dollars, then you can see that dollar index is still measuring a depreciation of 0.75%, which I think is not a good thing, especially for foreign investors. Right. So uh, the, the city's fall is not affecting the market, but investors with dollars are, are, are feeling the pinch. 
Yeah, they, they are feeling that pinch um, because if you have um, your investment on the market and you're a foreign investor, definitely you want to measure your returns in terms of um, dollars because the Ghana city is not what you are taking out as um, outside this country mm. in the long run. So if you're having a depreciation of 0.75, meaning uh, on the average your portfolio has decreased by about 0.75%, which I think is not a good thing for investors. But if you're looking at the broader market performance, in Ghana, in terms of Ghana cities, all the city in the in the uh, indices are yielding something good. With the composite yielding 13 from a week open of 12.80, so you can see though the indices are going up, um, the depreciation of the currency is affecting the market, and it, it's something that if we are not able to manage it well, mm. I mean, we will see it affecting the uh, performance of the market because some of these people who wants to see their returns in terms of dollars will start pulling out of the market right. before they suffer any additional. Uh, um, depreciation on the app portfolio. So we're not seeing at the moment, we're not seeing uh, the effect of the depreciation of the city on the market, but it doesn't seem that the market will be totally safe. We might begin to uh, have that feeling uh, sometime to come. Yes, I mean, we are not having that feeling now because if you look at the market, I mean, the market um, for three weeks continues has been um, showing appreciation. We don't know how this week is going to go. But mm. as I said, the market has been down on three occasions uh, this week, giving an indication that the market uh, might go down at the end of the week as in measuring the appreciation that the week began, uh, began with as compared to the appreciation that the week is closing with. The, ma the market might go down. And when it goes down, that maybe we are having the impact impact of the depreciation mm. of the city on it. But as you are saying, in the long term, if you are not able to keep um, this um, uh, challenge on the market, then we, we will definitely see Run it into impact. trouble. Yeah. L l let me quickly chip in this. In, in, in other jurisdictions, the, uh, the depreciation of the currency uh, immediately uh, will see uh, effect on, 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 the, on the stock market of that particular jurisdiction. Now, what has been the reason why the Ghana Stock Exchange, the Ghana Stock Market, has been able to withstand uh, this particular uh, depreciation of the city on its activities? I, I will attribute it to um, two basic reasons. When you look at the listed equities on the stock market, some of them, especially the financial stocks, and that is evident in the performance of the financial stock, yielding up to 21.51. Mm. I mean, the financial stocks are really doing well. So you see most of the stocks being dormant, but because of the aggressive nature of the financial stocks, we see the market in general moving up. So if you are really doing a one-on-one, -on -one one, mm. you see that some few stocks are pushing the right. market performance. And secondly, I would say that Ghana stock market is not that sensitive to information. Because you see um, the financial being released, and it takes time before you see it reflecting on the bears. So the sensitivity of the market is not that high as compared to more developed markets that any information, even appointment of directors and managers, mm. even affects the performance of the stock. Ghana stock market, we've not got into that stage. And I think that um, together with the performance of the listed equity is something that is taking a while for um, investors to react to it. But as I'm saying, as they study the trend and they see that city is not getting uh, better, better mm. then we might see the see effect, the effect on the very stock soon. Uh, David, you mentioned that the the financial stocks are, 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 are the ones that are pushing the, the market. They are the ones so, pushing so the market. So it means that uh, some other stocks are not faring well. Yeah, we, we have a lot. We have a lot of stocks. Though the Ghana stock market has um, only about. 37 um, equities um, listed on the exchange, we have a lot of the stocks not doing well. I mean, if you go mm. through the um, appreciations that they've recorded, with the exception of um, FanMog that I would say has also been pushing well, you see that most of the um, stocks that are pushing the year-to-date appreciation of the market is the financial stocks. You have the Ecobanks, we have the yeah. Standard Charters, the EGLs, they are the one making the strikes on the market. And because of the smaller nature of the uh, market, where the, 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 the movement of some um, uh, highly priced stocks, I mean, um, actually affect the um, market. I, I, I want us to dwell on uh, uh, those uh, equities that are not doing well at the tail end of this discussion, but let's look at EGL. Uh, it's one of the stocks that's doing quite well. How has yeah. it performed uh, so far this year? 
EGL has been um, one of the stocks that are trading, though um, when it started the year, it was almost dormant, but EGL starting the year at 1.88, um, close yesterday at 2.25, representing a year to date of about 19.68%. Mm. And this, you, 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 when you look at the financials of EGL, especially the one that we uh, is available, you see that consistently EGL was able to outperform the um, composite and the financial index. I think the first quarter, EGL was not able to match the financial um, index, but was able to um, outperform the composite index that gave it a plus. And this stems from the fundamental performance. And EGL holds a chunk of the pension funds in the country. So it's not um, abnormal. It's not strange that, yeah, it that we are seeing, that well. Yeah, because investors know the pension um, a sector has a lot of future in Ghana. So if you put your money into such stocks, and looking at the price um, somewhere in last year, it wasn't that high. So looking at that price, then you know, it's very good to pump in money so that you'll be able to get a lot of return. So, so investors looking to looking for where to drop their money could possibly be looking at EGL. Yeah, investors looking where to drop their because money. It, can it looks also, good. It looks good. Mm -hmm. I mean, but yes, um, um, last year, looking at the performance of EGL, when you plot the um, the, the price movement of EGL, you see that it's an upward um, sloping um, graph. It is just increasing. And, and looking at the finance, uh, fun, uh, fundamentals, too, you see it supports such a good and uh, the, the stock has a lot of um, good. Let, let, let's wrap up this conversation uh, looking at this. Now, in the coming week, you mentioned that the financial stocks are doing quite well. They, they are doing quite uh, well. There are others that are not pulling their weight. Yeah. Do we expect to see them perform same, or perhaps those that are not pulling their weight are likely uh, to show some some uh, uh, faces in, in the coming week? It, it's likely we might um, see some of them showing faces because mm. they're... Um, full year 2013 reports are almost out so right. as it comes out the ones that will be able to do well. but unfortunately looking at the third quarter performances of some of these non-financial stocks they couldn't just pull out work at all even pharma pharma that is doing extremely well i mean comparing um the year on year um, performance you see that pharma dropped a little but because of the expansion that is doing the stock keeps on selling but um let's wait and see how the um full year financials of these listed equities will impact those that will be able to um, impress their um, um, holders uh, will see some higher bids, but those that will not be able mm. to impress might just be that dormant or might receive some lower bids. So more, and so when our investors look at the, the report, perhaps then they begin to change their minds and say, okay, let's go into these stocks yeah. that, that are not doing well because the future looks bright. Yes, some of the stocks, they are not doing well today, but when you do the projections, you'll see that the future looks bright. And some of them too, they are not doing well today, but if you look at their financials too, they are still not performing well in their operations. So then you need to have a second thought. Look, before and, 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 and finally, those that are doing well, especially the... Um, uh, financial stocks the coming week will they continue to 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 be bullish or what happens to them what what we are we are expecting or we are seeing that they will continue to be bullish for some time because some of the financial stocks too are the stocks we term as the income um, yielding stocks they are stocks that pays um, regular dividend so at this moment um, a lot of investors want to get um, uh, part, uh, want to be part of the dividend payment mm. so they, they, they have to they, they will be rushing on it so until maybe the dividend payout is over or until they've closed their registers for the um, dividend payment then we should see some of the financial stocks also um, we should see the financial stocks still yielding to investors David thanks so much for Most speaking welcome. to me David Odo Dankwa is with Gold Coast Management Fund talking to me about the Ghana Stock Exchange. Let's just stay on a uh, little longer for business. The Bank of Ghana has revised its earlier directives regarding the rules and the operations of foreign exchange accounts and foreign currency accounts announced on February 4, 2014. According to the Central Bank, all balances in foreign currency accounts, FCA, and foreign exchange accounts, FEA, will continue to be held in foreign currency and will not be converted into Ghana cities. However, except for travel purposes, withdrawals out of these accounts over the counter will be paid in cities at the existing exchange rate. External transfers of up to $10,000 per annum without documentation from FEA and FCA are still permitted. It adds that balances held in foreign exchange accounts 
and foreign currency accounts continue to remain available for all legitimate external transactions. However, except for travel purposes, withdrawals out of foreign currency accounts over the counter will be paid in cities at the existing exchange rate. Forex bureaus may deposit and withdraw foreign exchange from their foreign exchange accounts. The central bank last week announced measures to shore up the city against the major foreign currencies. Let's see on that decision. Uh, John Gachi is a, a chartered economist with the University of Cape Coast Business School. Uh, John, thanks so much for joining us. Now, just a few days after the Bank of Ghana coming in to uh, give the directives, uh, it seems to have uh, taken a second decision. Let's try look into the, uh, the mind of the Bank of Ghana. What perhaps might have resulted in this? Well, I think there are two things uh, emanating from the revision by the Bank of Ghana. Uh, number one, since uh, uh, the rules seem to uh, be very harsh on some people, mm. uh, it sends some further panic into the system with some kind of misinterpretation. So I think the Bank of Ghana is just uh, uh, trying to explain uh, these rules further. Uh, uh, if you look at what they have done again, it seems that they are protecting their uh, directive on uh, uh, dealing with dollarization. That is why they say that except for travel purposes, right. uh, withdrawal from uh, your, uh, your foreign exchange account uh, over the counter will still be in Ghana City. Uh, that is to tell you that they are not actually uh, reverting or they are not actually withdrawing on their directive uh, with respect to dollarization. So I think that they are just giving further explanation, especially uh, those who are dealing with foreign exchange account and foreign currency uh, 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 account to get clearer understanding of what the Bank of Ghana mean by those two. Mm. Uh, how would you react to the, the concerns being raised uh, by some uh, quarters that uh, the directives were, were put in to, to, to correct some wrongs, and that now that the Bank of Ghana it, it seems to be uh, changing some of these directives, uh, it will go against uh, the target for which these directives were issued. Of course, of course the directives were meant to correct some uh, 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 yields in the, in the foreign exchange market, but it is not proper to say that... Uh, uh, the, the, the clarification that the Bank of Ghana is giving is going to defeat the purpose. Mm. That is not it at all. I see the Bank of Ghana give more clarification so that people will not panic, so that people will not give wrong interpretation to what uh, the Bank of Ghana meant. In fact, even if the Bank of, if Bank of Ghana does not do this, can you imagine if, let's say, a certain commercial bank does not get this import very clearly? and applies it in a, a manner that is not uh, the way the Bank of Ghana actually uh, uh, purpose by, by, by bringing in this directive. That would have been chaos and then uh, a lot of uh, panic in the, in the sector. So I think the Bank of Ghana is just giving clearer uh, 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 explanation to the rules and where there is some lee lee leeway mm. for those who want to deal with foreign currency accounts, the Bank of Ghana is just highlighting those opportunities. But I've not seen the Bank of Ghana uh, actually diluting its uh, uh, directive on dollarization. I do not see the Bank of Ghana diluting its directive on uh, not spending, uh, uh, not going to uh, 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 withdraw money over the count and spend in the Ghanaian economy. That is not what the Bank of Ghana is doing. So I do not think that we can force the Bank of Ghana in this uh, case. It's just giving directive as a regulator. Your directive must be very clear to people, and that makes uh, uh, compliance very easy. John, thanks so much for speaking to me. Thank you, too. John Gachi is a chartered economist and lecturer at the University of Cape Coast Business School. Time now to turn attention to the international front and Nigerian lawmakers investigating a claim that the state oil company has failed to remit $20 billion in oil revenues have ordered a forensic audit of fuel subsidy payments to find out where the money has
has gone. The central bank governor, Lamido Sanusi, wrote a letter last September to President Goodluck Jonathan saying almost $50 billion in revenues from oil exports from January 2012 to July 2013 had not been remitted to the Federation account in a clear violation of our law. He later lowered the estimate to $20 billion in his testimony to a Senate committee investigating the case. On Thursday, that committee questioned the finance minister, the oil minister, and Nigerian national Petroleum Corporation, which denied the news's charge that it runs fraudulent rockets. In some more international business, the two biggest U.S. cable communications operators are merging. Comcast Corporation said it is buying Time Warner Cable for more than $45 billion. The deal would create a combined company providing television and internet services to 30 million customers who account for about 30% of the U.S. pay television market. The company said they hope to complete the deal by the end of 2014, but the transaction faces a lengthy review by the U.S. regulators. The two companies currently compete with each other in few markets. Public interest groups are protesting the measure. They say that Comcast purchase of NBC three years ago has led to higher monthly cable bills for customers. In China, inflation rate remained subdued in January despite rising food prices during the New Year celebrations. Consumer prices held steady at 2.5% from a year earlier, which was slightly higher than many economists expected. The National Bureau of Statistics said there was a 3.7% rise in food prices during the month, which included both the Western and Chinese New Years. Chinese inflation has slowed markedly since 2011, when the annual consumer price index spiked to 5.4%. Meanwhile, factory gate prices fell 1.6%, marking the 23rd consecutive monthly decline. The latest price figures leaves room for the Chinese government to stimulate the economy if growth drops too low. Beijing has been looking to win the world's second largest of its dependence on exports and become more consumer oriented. By keeping price pressures low, the government is able to focus on promised reforms to make the economy more productive and keep incomes rising. That's it for business. Time now to look at sports brought to you by Tigo. And sports is also brought to you by Carl Bell. In sports this afternoon, there is still a glimmer of hope for football fans who intend to see the World Cup in Brazil, despite their inability to purchase online tickets after the sales of released tickets online elapsed last Friday. GFA Vice President in charge of ticketing for the World Cup, Fred Crintel, has confirmed to Joy Sports a final opening is in the pipeline in April for Ghanaians who still want to be part of the show in Brazil. Well, that is the situation. I mean, FIFA had to close the website for the application of tickets, and that was it. FIFA will come back and let those who have been successful know that they have been successful so that they could go ahead and pay for their tickets by the 28th of February. Well, it depends on the number of people who apply for tickets. If the number of people who apply for tickets far exceed the quantity that has been allocated to each participating member association, then there will be a random draw. I cannot tell you but, uh, offhand, but I know that about 3,000 people applied for, over 3,000 people applied for tickets from Ghana. But our allocation for the first game was 1,975. Well, it's up to FIFA. If, if you see the number of applications, then FIFA will then have to do what they call the random draw. So that is what they will do, because a lot more people applied for tickets as against the number that was allocated to Ghana. 
And in sub-international sports, England manager Roy Hudson says it will be difficult for Chelsea left-back Ashley Cole to secure a place in his starting 11 at this year's Summer's World Cup. Cole, 23, has failed to command a regular spot for the Blues this season while facing pressure from Everton's Leighton Baines for his England shed. Cole skipped England in May's 1-1 draw against Republic of Ireland at Wembley, where he was presented with the commemorative Golden Cup by Roxon ahead of kickoff to mark his 100 cap. The former Arsenal defender who has 106 caps for England since making his debut against Albania in 2001 has started only three of Chelsea's 16 Premier League games since November 2. Hudson has also ruled out an England return for Cole's teammate John Terry. Now, Lazio has threatened legal action against those who have questioned the legitimacy of the age of the 17-year-old Cameroonian player, Joseph Minala. The Italian side stated that his birth certificate is absolutely legitimate. Lazio added they deserve the right to take action against those responsible for the protection of the good name of the company and the footballer. The midfielder has also issued a statement via the club's website denying he told an African website he was 41. Minala joined the room club last summer and recently played for them in the Veraggio Cup Youth Tournament. And that's it for sports brought to you by Tigo and Cowbell. <laughs>back here so live on news today before we go to the international front the labor ward at the Confanochi teaching hospital in Kumasi has been closed down yesterday some nurses and doctors were were threatened by some uh, mob from Abuabo. Now, these nurses and doctors boycotted their post after some angry youth from the Muslim community allegedly assaulted them. Now, Lab FM's Wrestle uh, Society, Don Kor, is at the hospital now and has just joined me on phone. Erastos, thanks so much for staying there. Now, uh, can you confirm if it's been closed down and what is happening to the patients there at the moment? Well, I can confirm to you that indeed uh, the labor world of the conformity you know, so, hospital um, is not functioning at the moment. Um, I just went there a short while ago and uh, they were turning away fresh patients. So they are not admitting new patients. They are taking care of the few uh, they have there, have been told. But the doors are locked. There, there are no nurses or doctors inside, um, contrary to what happens normally when it's functioning. Mm. Uh, what are hospital authorities telling you uh, for uh, closing the doors of the ward to patients? I've been told by the public relations officer for the hospital, Kwame Pong, that um, after the assault yesterday, not many of the nurses and doctors who were assaulted uh, have been able to uh, return to duty. And as a result, some sectors of the hospital are not uh, functioning or they are functioning partially. Uh, at the moment. But I must also mention that when you go uh, uh, to the A block, uh, below the A block, you find two patrol vehicles and a number of policemen uh, stationed there. And I've been told that this is a part of measures to uh, boost security at the hospital. So there is a restricted access to people uh, who are entering or leaving mm. uh, the, the hospital at the moment. But, Aristos, let's clarify these. Uh, now, are uh, the nurses and doctors allegedly uh, assaulted, uh, afraid to come back to work, or uh, they, they cannot come to work because they are nursing injuries? Well, some of them, um, I've been told, are scared of coming back to duty. Uh, some of them, too, have filed uh, formal complaints with the uh, police service at the central police headquarters. I can mention that uh, per my checks with the police, uh, so far, uh, four nurses and three doctors have filed formal complaints of assault uh, with the central police headquarters. And so the original CID is investigating. And so I'm, I'm being told that some of the doctors are scared 
uh, to come back to duty. And some are saying that until they see uh, practical measures on the ground to protect them uh, whilst on duty, uh, uh, they are not coming back to work. Mm. Uh, and uh, it, it, that means that even the, the presence of uh, security men there, as you're talking now, uh, is not enough for these health workers to, to return to work. Uh, exactly. And I've been trying to personally contact uh, some of the doctors I know uh, were assaulted. Uh, for example, Dr. Ankobia, uh, I've been calling his phone since morning. He's not picking up. Uh, so we do not know. And unless we confirm from them personally, we wouldn't know their reason. Mm. Uh, for, for not returning to you. And the signals you're picking from authorities, is this closure uh, going to, how long is it going to last? I asked, I posed the same question to the PRO, uh, PRO for, for Panache, and he's telling me he cannot tell. And they have sent word around after the emergency management meeting yesterday to tell the doctors uh, that they have put uh, security measures in place and indeed I have confirmed it myself there is a restricted access uh, security men have been posted to all entrances uh, certain ent uh, uh, doors uh, leading to the hospital have been shut and security men placed there uh, but they have communicated same to the affected doctors and all staff uh, to return to duty but uh, that is yet to be adhered to Mm. Uh, Erasmus, finally, before you go, uh, the patients who are being turned away, uh, if you've been speaking to them, what are they telling you? Well, one patient I spoke with, a pregnant woman uh, who had been referred to the labor ward, was telling me that uh, she's just going back to uh, where uh, she was referred uh, to, to let the doctors there tell her what to do next because she's stranded. Rasos, uh, sorry, Donko, thanks so much for speaking to me there from uh, the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital in Kumasi. The labor ward has been closed down. Uh, health personnel fear for their lives uh, and so will not uh, come to work. I were told that some have also been injured. We'll get you more updates later on right here on the Joy News on Multi TV. But time now to hit the international front. The leaders of four African nations have pledged to honor a 10 year moratorium on sales of ivory. The leaders of Botswana, Gabon, Chad, and Tanzania made a statement at the gathering in London to discuss the illegal wildlife trade. The aim is to draw up a global declaration that will tackle animal trafficking. Prince Charles and the Duke of Cambridge are attending the meeting hosted by the government. The African leaders have said they will not act on an option to sell from their ivory stockpiles in an effort to protect the elephants. The World Wildlife Fund estimates that the animal black market is worth $19 billion a year. The bulk of poaching takes place in Africa, but much of the demand comes from Asia, where animal products such as rhino horns are used in traditional medicine or are bought by the rich as trophies. And so time to wind down with some showbiz and ace her life musician Irama Bidu has been sharing some fond memories of her music career with us. She says when she looks back today, she's proud of how far she has come. She also displayed a few Azonzo steps for her fans. A woman, and you have got the uh, voice of a man, like I'm how I'm uh, listen, talking now, you can use that your, your voice to sing what you want to sing. It's never you are, you are a woman, so you have to uh, 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 listen, raise your voice. You are going to spoil it. Later on, you can't, you can't sing again. life musician Erama Bedu says she admires those who wear hot dresses. Me, if I see you dancing and your performance is like uh, short uh, is, uh, uh, dresses and others. Anyway, I, I have seen some before, but I couldn't do it like that. I wouldn't do it at all like that because I've got some scars, small, small in my... I, I don't like it. So, so all the time I was interested as a 
Nguma. I think we, if we do this, it's nice. It's, it's nice to some people, you see. But to me, if I see like that, I know we get some minutes more, but, <laughs> but I don't like, I will, I will never do that. And to also make sure that she's keeping pace with more than trends, she showed us a few steps of Azonto. Rama Bidu there showing what she is made of. In our closing headlines, the labor ward at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital has been closed down after protests by Aguabu youth Thursday demanding the release of babies allegedly burnt by hospital staff. In business, Bank of Ghana has revised its earlier directives regarding the rules on the operations of foreign exchange accounts and foreign currency accounts announced on February 4, 2000. And 14. Thanks so much for staying with us. We have uh, more news at uh, five minutes to two o'clock. My name is Brighton Afro. Thanks so much for watching.